and we are live round number two for the day guys thank you for hanging out again if you're watching me live on twitch or after the fact on youtube as usual it is an honor to have you hanging out with me we are going to attempt the second scenario of cloud goat i am a little bit limited on time so i'm going to hang out with you guys for maybe 45 minutes to 50 minutes and i gotta go get my daughter from school then i have some um work meetings but have a kind of chunk of time here that i want to jump in and do some more cloud goat cloud goat cloud cloud goat i cannot talk cloud goat type stuff so let's do it <clears throat> let me go ahead and share my screen and let's dive into it. If you missed the past couple of streams or the past couple of videos on YouTube, make sure you watch those first. I did an intro to Cloud Goat, and we also did a video series going through the first full scenario. So let's go ahead and get Cloud Goat, Cloud Goat pulled up. And we're going to try this one more of a black box technique. And let's just see if we can figure it out together and, and we'll work our way through it. And not if, but when we get stuck, we'll look at the walkthrough. But let's jump down and go to our second scenario looks like this one right here visit scenario page <clears throat> so what are we doing size easy here's our command to create it and let's go ahead and get that created and i'll show you guys how to do this really easy once you have cloud goat all set up it really is this simple. So it's just, you're calling the cloudgo.py create and the scenario name. Now it is gonna drop me some creds after I create it. So I will have to stop sharing my screen at that point in time, but we can at least get this thing started. So we'll just hit enter on that. And there we go, that'll start doing its thing. And while it does its thing, let's read through what we're gonna be working on. So we have our scenario resources. We're gonna have an one IM user, five policy versions. Uh, we're going to start as the IM user Raynor. So I think the context is, you know, maybe we have compromised Raynor's AWS account, and we're going to see if we can privesk from that point on. Our scenario goal is to acquire full admin privileges. And here's our summary. Starting with the highly limited IM user, the attacker is able to review previous IM policy versions and restore one which allows full admin privileges, resulting in a privilege escalation exploit. So here's how we'll do it. I think we'll use the route walkthrough, kind of the big picture walkthrough, uh, before we use the specific cheat sheet, but let's try to use the walkthrough and see if we can figure out the commands on our own and, and stumble our way through this. One thing that I want to do is, once again, my goal is not to rush through this. My goal is to learn. And if you've been part of this series from the beginning, you know that I'm new to AWS pen testing as well. And I have not prepped this ahead of time. So this is my first time going through this scenario. And so we will stumble through it together and learn what we can. But uh, Hack Tricks has a really helpful kind of basic AWS pen testing page. The one thing I want to draw your attention to is if you look at the number one resource, Cloud Goat by Rhino Security Lab, shout out there. But we have this AWS basic information and we might cross-reference some of this stuff. So you may have an idea of what an IAM user is, or maybe you don't. So let's just slow down and read through very quickly what an IAM user is. And as we encounter terms that are specific to AWS, I'll do my best to slow down and and help you understand it. So here it is, identity and access management. IAM is a service that will allow you to manage authentication, authorization, and access control inside your AWS account. Authentication, of course, is the process of defining an identity and the verification of that identity. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. This process can be su subdivided in identification and verification. Authorization determines what an identity can access within a system once it's been authenticated to it and access control the method and process of how access is granted to a secure resource. IAM can be defined by its ability to manage, control, and govern authentication, authorization, and access control mechanisms of identities to your resources within your AWS account. Now, if we remember, we have a highly limited IAM user, which means we're gonna have limited stuff. We have, of course, the root user, which I'll let you read about that on your own, but we are an IAM user. So an IAM user is an entity that you create in AWS to represent the person or application that uses it to interact with AWS. A user in AWS consists of a name or credentials, password, and up to two access keys. I talked about access key in my intro to Cloud Goat video, so if you missed that, check it out. When you create an IAM user, you grant it permissions by making it a member of a user group that has appropriate permission policies attached or by directly attaching policies to the user. 
Users can have MFA enabled to log in through the console. API tokens of MFA enabled users aren't protected by MFA. If you want to restrict the access of a user's API keys using MFA, you need to indicate in the policy that in order to perform certain actions, MFA needs to be present. There's an example here. Here's just how to access it via the Amazon CLI. So I already talked about how to do this in the first video. We have MFA information here. Here's our IM user group is a way to attach policies to multiple users at one time which can make it easier to manage the permission for those users. Roles and groups cannot be part of a group. You can attach an identity-based policy to a user group so that all the users in the user group receive the policy's permissions. You cannot identify a user group as a principal in a policy, such as a resource-based policy, because groups related to permissions, not authentication, and principals are authenticated IAM entities. Here are some important characteristics of user groups, and I promise we will jump over to the task in a moment. A user group can contain many users, and a user can belong to multiple groups. User groups can't be nested. They can contain only users, not other user groups. There is no default user group that automatically includes all users in the AWS account. If you want to have a user group like that, you must create it and assign each new user to it. And the number and size of IAM resources in an AWS account, such as the number of groups and the number of groups that a user can be a member of, are limited. For more information, see that. And IAM roles are very similar to a user. It is an identity with permission policies that determine what it can and cannot do in AWS. However, a role does not have any credentials. I think maybe the Lambda stuff we did would fall into that in our previous scenario. Okay, so far so good. We have some temporary creds. I think this is a good enough overview of IAM in general for us to tackle this task. Just momentarily, I am going to stop sharing. I'm going to pull up the task and it looks like it did correctly create the account ID and the secret key for me for this Raynor account. Let's see, just checking everything here. We have our account ID and secret key. So if you're following along in your own uh, council, you should have a message that gives you the uh, output Raynor access key ID and output Raynor secret key. And if you watched the previous video, you can configure that profile very quickly with AWS. And I know you guys can't see this, but it's AWS configure dash dash profile, and then we'll call it Raynor. And then you are going to be prompted for the access key ID and the secret. So as soon as I get this plugged in, I'll go back to share my screen for you guys. Get our secret key here. Okay, done share my screen. Hopefully you guys can see it again. So the first step that we need to do according to like our high level overview is starting as the IAM user, the attacker has only a few limited, seemingly harmless privileges available to them. Well, the first thing that we should probably check is what privileges do we have available to us? And the way we can do that, if we look at handy old hack tricks right here, this is kind of like a, who am I in AWS? So we can do AWS STS get caller identity or I am get user, uh, we can try this one. And then I think we can just specify, if we do profile Raynor, there we go. So since we set up a profile, that's how we do it that way. So we have this, we have our username, Raynor I am privest by rollback. So that is our full username. We have our user ID right there, of course, our ARN, Amazon resource, is it number? No, it wouldn't be number. It's some type of identifier for the Amazon resource. We have that full thing right there. We have our create date. We have a few, tag, a few tags here. Of course, it's a cloud goat tag. We have the full value of the name there. Um, and here's our scenario. I am Privesk by rollback. Now we need to get our, our uh, permissions. Attacker is only a few limited, seemingly harmless privileges available to them. I think this might give us a little more information if we do this command. So let's try that. Profile Raynor. Let's see if that if, if this is any different between these two commands. Oh, so this command actually gives us a lot more information. So this is just giving us our user ID, our account, and our ARN. So let's continue to read through hack tricks and see if we can figure this out. So we have IAM enumeration. If you have enough permissions, checking the privileges of each entity inside the AWS account will help you understand what you and other identities can do and how to escalate privileges. If you don't have enough permissions to enumerate IAM, you can still 
you can, I think it's supposed to be still brute force them to figure them out. Check how to do the enumeration and brute forcing here. Okay, let's check it out. Enumeration, main permissions needed. So I'm not sure if we have those permissions or not, but let's let's find out. So we have this, all IAMs retrieves information about all IAM users, groups, roles, and policies in your AWS account, including their relationship to one another. Use this operation to obtain a snapshot of the configuration of IAM permissions in your account. Well, let's go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens. And we'll just append that with our profile, Raynor. It's taking a second. I'm assuming that's a good sign that we do have permissions. Go back to our big scenario. And even when we find them, it looks like it's going to be, you know, very limited. The attacker analyzes Raynor's privileges and notices the set default policy version permission. So that should catch our eye. And once we find it, we'll do some Googling on that to figure out, you know, why that is exploitable. Okay. Well, this, this looks interesting. This looks good. So we have, of course, our username, create date, attach, manage policies. We have privas by rollback. So that's just the policy name that I think we're going to exploit if I go down. So these are just all the other permissions, I think, with Cloud Goat. I don't know if these are going to be helpful to us. I wonder, I wonder the best way to get, whoops, come on, VMware. The attacker analyzes Raynor's privs and notices that. So maybe there's a different command that helps us easily analyze the privileges of like a specific user. So, uh, get metadata of user including permission boundaries. Maybe maybe this is a command that might be helpful to us. So if we do this, and we're going to do profile Raynor, but then we need the full username of Raynor, which we found up above. Okay, we're just going to grab this and scroll. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay, this... I think this is our full username right here. So if we go ahead and grab that, scroll back down to the bottom of our terminal, and we'll go over to the username field and drop that in there. And let's see if this does anything for us. Okay, so we have our username, user ID, ARN. Hmm. And then we just have these tags. I wonder how to get like the best way to get actual permissions. We're gonna we're gonna look at the cheat sheet because I'm curious like how we're supposed to be doing this. So AWS IAM list attached user policies. So list attached user policies is the one we want to use. Is that in here anywhere? Uh, list attached list user access keys. Oh, list attached user policies. Okay, it doesn't get inline policies. So if we would have just kept going, we would have eventually found it. But let's go ahead and grab this command. It looks like that's the command that we want to use for this. So we're looking for attach policies. But hey, we learned some other commands in the process of us stumbling through this. So we'll count that as a win. And we'll go over to our username here. Like that. And let me grab this full username right there. Okay, enter. So we have our attached policy. Oh, so I guess we did see this policy name. This privs by rollback. And then we saw, I think we saw this policy, right? Now, what are we supposed to notice about this? Um, go back to here. The attacker analyzes his privileges. So do we need to analyze that policy? The set default policy version permission. Okay, I see. I see what we're doing here. So then we are going to... I guess I am going to use the cheat sheet, but once again, you don't know what you don't know. 
So I see what we're doing here. We are first enumerating the policy. So that's step number one. And then uh, we're looking at what policies are attached. Then we're going to enumerate the individual policy, which will give us a little bit more information about that. So whoops, we need to take this whole thing right here, this whole ARN. And delete all this. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, so let's see what we have here. What, what information does this tell us? So once again, the first thing we did is we enumerated all the policies. Then we said, hey, tell us the specific information about this policy by passing the policy-arn tag and then of course our profile at the end. So we have our standard version is default version false, create date. So we have these different things, but that that doesn't give us that much information though. Oh, then we have to actually do the version ID. I see. So we have these different versions. I wonder if it matters which version ID we look at. Are each one of these going to be different? Like do we need to enumerate each one of these? I would guess we do. So we just go here. I think it was just what version ID like that. I shouldn't pull it up on my other monitor so I don't have to keep glancing back and forth. We'll get it pulled up here. Cheat sheet is here. Was I right on that? Yeah, dash dash version ID. And then we can specify the version ID. So do we just do like one? Nope. Is it V1 or something? Version ID, and then it just says version ID and profile Raynor. Unknown options, version ID. Let me just copy it from here. Maybe I'm typing something wrong. So one would think the version ID would just be, if we look up here, we have these version IDs. They're called V5, V4, V3, V2, V1. One would think the version ID would just be, you know, V5. So if we do V5 here, and if we go ahead and grab our policy ARN from right there, copy that. Sorry for the constant clicking. If I hold down my arrow key on my keyboard, anytime I'm in VMware, it sticks. And then it just goes all the way back. So let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, so that was correct. So if we do V5 anyways, then we enumerate that specific policy version. So we have our version here. Our effect is allow, our action is IM get. And look at that, we have that that wildcard again, which is interesting, and resource wildcard means this applies to every single resource. Date greater than, date less than, version ID 5 is default version false, create date. So um, what what is supposed to stand out to us again? <laughs> Set default policy permission. Well, let's enumerate each one of these. See, they're just stuck on me. Come on. VMware. Let's try that. So if we do V4, gives us some information as well. Um, I'd assume like V5 is the most recent one. I don't, I guess I don't know enough about how all these things work if all of them apply, but let's just look at each one. So this is showing some stuff about IP type stuff, stuff that's allowed, our create date. Let's see what V2 is. Okay, so here's a policy effect allow action. We can list bucket, get object, and list all my buckets on all resources from what I can see. And I, I already forgot what I'm looking for. Set default policy version permission. The attacker analyzes his privileges and notices a set default policy version permission. And we are doing what this command right here. I am get policy version, set default policy version. Like how do we, where do we notice that though? I'm 
let's keep doing this. You know, I'm thinking like if I was doing a pen test, how would I how would I catch this? Oh, right there. Okay, so it was V1, and we see this right here, set default policy version. Let's go ahead and just, whoops, let's copy this whole string here, and let's read about it. I'll get Twitch pulled back up. All right. What do you have to say about this AWS? Get a drink of some Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm going to check work stuff on my other screen once again i'm rhino's graciously allowing me to hang out on stream with you guys but i need to keep my eye over on work on my side screen i got four monitors in front of me i don't know how to keep all this track all right set default policy version sets the specified version of the specified policy as a policy's default operative version okay very yoda way of saying that but it makes sense this operation affects all users groups and roles that the policy is attached to to list the users, groups, and roles that the policy attached to, use that. We have these request parameters, version ID we already heard about. So what if I go like this and I type exploit? Well, look at that. There, the top one is a blog by the great Rhino Security Labs. At Rhino Security Labs, we do a lot of pen testing for AWS architecture and invest heavily in AWS security research. This post will cover our recent findings in a new IAM privest method 21 in total, which allow an attacker to escalate. Okay, cool. So here's this one. Specific AWS escalation methods. Who, who wrote this? Spencer. Thanks, Spencer. Create a new policy version is the first one here. So an attacker with the I am create policy version permission, which uh, we have set default policy version can create a new version of an IAM policy they have access to. This allows them to define their own custom permissions. When creating a new policy version, it needs to be set as the default version to take effect, which you would think would require the set default permission. Oh, so maybe this doesn't actually explain how to exploit that. Let me... Oh, an attacker with the set default. So here, here's where we're at. An attacker with the IAM set default policy version permission may be able to escalate privileges through existing policy versions that are not currently in use. If a policy they have access to has versions that are not the default, they would be able to change the default version to any other existing version. An example command to exploit this method might look like this. So we, can, we need to look at the versions and see if any of those are exploitable. So we already looked through all of these. So here's the, here's the one that is... In effect, V1, okay? Because we have the set default policy version and we can notice the stuff here. So if you look at this tag right here, is default version true, where all the other ones is, is default version false. But because we have permissions to set default policy version, we can change it around and we can set it to one of the other five versions. So let's read through these five versions and see which one we could exploit. So this one's interesting. We can list a bucket, get object, and list all my buckets. So I would assume that if we set this as the one that is active, if there's any interesting S3 buckets, we could access those S3 buckets, maybe if there's sensitive information in them because it's applied to all resources. So that's, that's a possibility. Let's see. V3 here, this policy, well, this is a deny policy, so we probably don't care about this, at least not in our context. This is a, looks like a policy that is denying um, based on IP address. Let's see what V2 was. Is this V2? Oh, this is V4. Did I ever? So this was V3. Oh, this is V2, V3. Okay, here's V4. Action wildcard effect allow resource wildcard. Huh. So if I'm understanding this policy correctly, it's just saying, hey, if this policy is active, you have access to literally everything. So if we set this policy active, I wonder if that's the way that we escalate our privileges. What's this one? So this is the effect allow. I am get wildcard. Um, I'm not sure what I am get does, but it would appear that this allows us to do anything with that. So let's just copy that and let's read about this. Uh, I am git. So git roll. 
retrieves information about the specified role, including the role's path, GUID, ARN, and the role's trust policy that grants permissions to assume the role. So this would just allow us to query any role, I think, not necessarily privilege escalation. I bet the path is going to be taking policy number four and making it active because from what I can see, it gives us access to every resource. If we glance over at CloudGoat, what's this say? Attacker restores the full admin policy version. Uh, wait, after he's viewing the old policy versions, the attacker finds one version in particular that offers a full set of admin rights. That might be what that is. So if we look at our cheat sheet here, oh, it doesn't even tell us which policy it is. Um, I'd assume that's the policy though. And if we look at the blog post we were reading, where was it at, right here? We're given an example of how to exploit this. So let's copy this and I'm actually gonna do this a little bit different. I'm gonna pull up handy dandy notepad just because VMware is so bugged out when I try to do things, just so we get the syntax right. So we have AWS IAM, set default policy version, policy ARN, and now we need to update that. And I think, once again, I think this would be the one that does it. I could also see maybe this one, but if I'm understanding this one correct, it just allows us to query any role, but I don't know, let's find out. Let's try this one first though. So we have this ARN right here. And we'll pull up our handy dandy notepad. And we're going to update it to version four. And let's see if this does anything for us. We'll have to specify our profile, of course. Raynor, I believe, is his name. Do, 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 do. The following arguments are required. Policy ARN. Oh, you know what? The syntax was incorrect. Because we need, you need double dots. I think it may be just the way I copied it screwed that up. There we go. Or not double dots, double dashes, whatever you want to call them. An error occurred access to now when calling the set default policy operation. Oh. Maybe if we specify the right profile. Okay. So now if we query, let's see, how do we, was it this the query? Let's see, policy ARN version four profile. If we query this, oh, let's go back. So here's the, I think here's the, where we're querying it at. So if we change this to V4, now we can see, so it updated that, is default version true? So we successfully updated it to this policy. Now, whether or not that's the one that we need in order to actually get the final flag is the question. So let's see, we did set default policy, profile Raynor as a final step. Oh, attacker restores the full admin policy version, getting full admin privileges and the ability to carry out any malicious action they wish. And I suppose one proof of concept, um, I don't remember the syntax. Let me jump back to this so we can read the secrets because only the admin should be able to read the secrets. So if we jump to, let me actually go back to the cloud goat main one. And if we go to the first task, the first scenario, I believe it kind of gave us the information on this cheat sheet on how to read the permissions. Uh, whoops. Oh, did I click the wrong scenario? Hold up. I obviously don't know how to use a computer. Sorry, guys. Vulnerable Lambda, right? Okay, this is what I was looking for. And now if we go to this cheat sheet, it would be this command here. So we should only be able to do this if we are admin. We just need to update the name, of course. But if we go here, throw this in here, my arrow key is gonna stick. Yep, there it sticks. Gosh, VMware, step your game up. Probably me, I probably have something configured wrong, but it's better to blame other people, right? 
Raynor, and let's see if this works. Okay, so sure enough, we gave ourselves administrative access, and now we just need to find the specific secret um, in order to get the final flag, which we can just kind of go through here. We should find one about what I am Privesk or something. Oh, did I miss it? So this is the final secret for the hard path. Well, maybe the flag is like just the fact that we, I mean, we clearly have administrative permissions now. We could check our permissions, I suppose, as well. These are just the detection evasion ones, so we'll get to that path eventually. So I'm not seeing anything else as far as the secrets go. But let's query our permissions now. And I don't know, I guess see if anything's different. So if we go back to this command, if we just check something like this, we'll have to, well, it wouldn't be username Raynor. I don't think that would work. Let's go to our AWS pen testing stuff. And here is, if we do the standard, like, who am I? Was that here? Can we keep my tabs straight? There we go. So what if we do this? Okay, that didn't work. Profile Raynor. And there's our profile. So now if we check our permissions again, which we did that by going to here. And it was this one, the attached policies. We just need that full username. So if we do that, grab the full username here. Like so. We'll paste that in here. Profile Raynor. And then we have the policy name there. And then I believe we looked at that specific policy in order to get that. But either way, we did become admin. We were able to list the secrets, whereas before we would not have been able to list the secrets with the permissions that we had. And the way we did that was by taking advantage of that. So let's very quickly um, review kind of what happened so we understand this a little better. So we started as the IM user Raynor. The attacker has only a few seemingly harmless privileges available to them. And let's cross-reference with the cheat sheet. So we know how we did this. Let me close these out. First, that was just configuring the profile here, of course. And then we have this IAM list attached user policies, username, Raynor, profile, Raynor. So that was just looking at what policies we had access to. But in order to figure out, like we had the set default policy version, if you remember right, we had to enumerate each policy specifically, which I believe was right here. So here's get policy version. And once we figured out all the policies, we saw there was a total of five versions. We had to specify each version ID, and we realized V1 was the one that was active. And the reason we knew it was active is because it had like set default prof policy or whatever as true. So we reviewed all five policies, and we found one policy that stood out to us because it used the wildcard to give us access to all resources. And finally, we abused that permission that we had this set default policy version permission. We abuse that permission in order to set the default policy version to the one that seemed interesting to us, which was V4, set that as our profile. And from there, we became the admin. We had wild card access to every resource in the AWS environment. And from there, we pulled the secrets down as a proof of concept that we got administrative privileges. So Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was I am Privesk by rolling back a previous policy that was there but wasn't active. We made it active and we became the admin. So that is Cloud Goat scenario number two. Hopefully you guys learned something with me. I know I learned something. For those of you just joining, I think a few of you just hopped on. I apologize. Just about to wrap up. We finished Cloud Goat Scenario 2. If you missed it, you can rewatch the stream. Otherwise, it will be up on YouTube shortly. And my goal, once again, is we are going to stream through every scenario on Cloud Goat and see what we can learn. So the next scenario that we'll tackle, and if I have time, I will be live again tomorrow and we'll tackle this scenario. So we've completed Vulnerable Lambda. We completed I am Privest by rollback and uh, we have some Lambda Privest. So that's cool. So we did Vulnerable Lambda and now we're gonna use Lambda to escalate our privileges 
So we will do that in the next stream. So guys, thank you for hanging out. Really do appreciate you guys being here. And I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.